And we're back. That's right, folks. Part seven. My name is Jared Mendes, and this is part seven. How to program, create, design, make a rail shooter in Game Maker Studio 2. Now you're like, oh my God, part seven. Yes, I do this nice and slowly. For those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, this is based on the assignment that I'm giving my students. As a matter of fact, this entire one hour or 45 minutes to an hour and a half tutorials that I do are really to give my students the opportunity to be able to review the materials that they're doing as they're following along and designing their own rail shooters. And I hope you do as well. All right, so part seven. Well, before we begin part seven, well, as we begin part seven, let's take a look at where we last left off. And we do that by running or compiling or hitting play in our video game. Yay. And as I recall, we got quite far. Take my glasses off so we can get in here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so everything animates. Lots of sound noise. Boing. Boing. The bass can be hit. Boing. Hero bass can be hit. Boing. 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 All right. And... Boing. Yay. Boing. So I can die. I can live. And uh, I can clear the screen. And it re re reboots itself. So there we go. We have all of our sound effects. And our gameplay is done. Let us stop that. Oof. By the way, for those of you who are joining us, I am live in the chat window. So if you have anything you'd like to say, I'm watching and I will answer questions. And I love questions because last time we had some really nice feedback. We ended up making new features. So let's take a big old breath. The game is done. The game is built. The game is complete. But the game isn't really done. Only the gameplay is. I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. But I have more work to do. So... I need to do a little bit more design. Now, the original design we did, we brought up this document here. We talked about all the levels of interactivity. We put together our scenarios. We did our programming, what happens. We programmed those scenarios. We put them into animations and we added sound effects. But we haven't been able to do score yet. Now, we're gonna get back to score. Score and lives are gonna be the last thing that we program. But before we do that, we need to actually go back and build the rest of our framework. We need to build the rest of our structure. And to do that, I'm going to come up over, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, believe it or not, in OneNote. Well, I needed a whiteboard. I'm a whiteboard teacher. Look how bright that is, right? I'm a whiteboard teacher. And so I'm always looking at the whiteboard. So let me come over here and start off by grabbing myself a basic shape and talking about the one room that we've made so far. And the one room that we've made so far has been the game, right? So I come over here and I can type, does this work? Are you, do you, oh, no, I guess it doesn't work. Let's come over here and see if I can get this to work. All right? G A M E, right? That's the one room we've made so far, which is the game room. Now, let me come over here and see if I can get rid of this. I'll erase the little dot over here. But we need more than just the game room. Now, this is where you sort of understand how the whole thing starts to really come together as you start playing inside of Game Maker or inside of any game thing. Is It's not just the room that you're in. It's not just that one facet. If you're going to build a really big or epic game, you're going to have multiple rooms. And right now we're going to talk about user interface as a starting point. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, well, the first room that we need is going to be our main menu, right? And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to come over here and say main, right? Now, our main menu is going to be very important to us because it's going to be where we get started. Now, this is going to be where we're going to have things like the title. We're going to have things like uh, and the, you know, something that lets us know what it is that we're getting into. And it's also going to have certain levels of instructions. Um, so let me come over here. And again, I'm just doing this for, 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 the, for the giggles. And let's see if this works. Um, oh, I'm still I'm still drawing, aren't I? Hmm. Fun. It's been so long since I've actually had to do this without a pen. And if I do this with my finger, it's going to be horrible. Let me see if I can do it with my finger, right? So I do this with my finger. Yeah, see, I'm hitting my microphone while I'm doing this, right? Do it with my finger. So what am I going to do? I'm really going to have uh, the the big question is how do I get from the main to the game, right? And the answer is, I've got to decide what keyboard I'm going to use for this. So everything's been keyboard based so far. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use the S key to get me to the main, to the game, right? That's going to be for start. That's what I do. And my students have to use these keys because I want them all to be consistent when I put them on the same computer. 
All right, so that's my main menu. And we'll talk about designing a main menu a little bit. But I want more than just a main menu, right? There are other things that are gonna happen here. There are two other types of screens that I like. Um, I'm gonna have an instruction screen, and I'm also going to, oops, I'm gonna have an instruction screen, and I'm also gonna have a credit screen, right? So I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna say credits. Oh, I'm so bad with the mouse. Uh, one of my teachers used to refer to this as drawing with a potato. And then of course, I'm gonna have the instruction screen, right? Instruction screen. Now the first question is, how do I get from the main menu to the credits? And the answer is, I'm gonna press C on the, on the keyboard. How do I get from the main menu to the instructions? I'm gonna press I on the keyboard. So right now we have uh, CSI or uh, CIS or ISC or whatever you, order you wanna do it in. Uh, we have all three of these. So this is gonna tell me what it is I need to do. Now, how am I gonna get back from the credits to the main menu? Well, I'm gonna use the S key for that. It's gonna be sort of our generic key. And again, the same thing for the instruction screen. I'm gonna use the S key for that as well. Oh, look at that, I love this auto closure thing. If only it could make everything I draw look nice. So before we even get deep into this, we already have made our main, our game game, but now we have the main menu, which of course we get to by pressing the S key the, from the game. So we go main to game with the S key, main to credits with the C key, and main to instructions with the I key. And we'll talk about what other things I wanted it visually, but I wanna start building this idea of what it is that we're doing as we're playing with this stuff. I know it's not very pretty, but you get the general idea. Now, once we're inside of the game, really there are two things that can happen. Um, we can uh, level up. Uh, now, technically they're not levels, I have to be honest with you. Uh, this is really just what I'm gonna to card to as a windscreen. Uh, when I say windscreen, because really we're not dealing with levels here, every wave is gonna be the same. So we're gonna either say you win or a level. It's really not leveling up, it's a wave. And how do I get from here to there? How do I get from uh, the, uh, the game to the win? Well, the answer is, let me turn off the ink to shape. The answer is, uh, this is programmatic. So when we know this, when there's, you know, number of enemies, number of enemies is equal to zero, right? That's how you know, that's how you know you won. And that takes you to the win screen. What happens after you win? Well, you're gonna go right back into the game and you're gonna do that by pressing the S key again. Again, we spend a lot of times with, it, with this idea of what the keyboards are gonna be like. All right, that's your win screen. Next, what do we have? We have our uh, die screen. Now, there technically there are two die screens, right? Um, one die screen is um, is very very quick, and the of course the other one is is the not just the regular death, it's the fatal death, right? So one of them is you die, right? So this would be die, uh, but then the other one is fatal death, which is game over. All right, game over. All right, so game over is what happens when all of your lives are lost. Now, how do you get from die back to the game? Well, that's easy, you press S. But what happens at the game over is you come all the way back to main menu and you press S there as well. Now, again, while this seems like a bunch of chicken scratch, it really isn't. It starts to make sense after a while that every room has to be able to get into from any other room. Now the question is, how do we get from game to die? Well. Uh, it's both of these are going to be happen when you get hit, right? You know, hero hit, hero hit. But if it's last life, you know, lives equals zero, then we go to game over, lives is greater than zero, then we go to die. So now we've literally put all these bits and pieces together. I'm gonna grab the highlighter over here and remind you that this is programmed, this is programmed, and this is programmed. And then of course, I'm gonna change my highlighter color to something a little bit more uh, bluish, right? And show you that this, this, and all the rest of these are done using just keyboard commands. So the idea being is, is that most of the navigation is done with keyboard commands. Very, very straightforward. So that only these three rooms need to be navigated to programmatically, as in programmatically based on other than, you know, I did this, then it did this. So what does that mean is, is that my game here is gonna have seven rooms. We already have built the first room, which is the game room, but I need to build the rest of the infrastructure to really understand what's going on. Now, there's a reason I do this at this point. 
we're going to start playing with global variables. And when we're dealing with global variables, things like lives and score and even what level we're on, these things have to be able to live outside of the room. And if we're only inside of one room, then it'll be reset every time. Where and when can I initialize these variables? I can't initialize the variable for score inside of the game room. Otherwise, every time I go back to the game room, the score is going to be reset or the live is going to be reset. So I need a main room. I need a room outside of the game that's going to allow me to set up my variables. The rest of this is just niceties. Do I need to have a windscreen? No. Do I need to have a die screen? No. I could take care of both of those with um, animations and just slow people down. But the idea of having a little bit of a cutscene is very useful. It lets people keep track of what they're looking at. It gives you a moment to breathe, to be able to see how am I doing. And again, also a little bit of time to be funny if you are illustratively clever, which I'm not. So this idea about a windscreen and a die screen, now you will need a game over screen regardless, but a windscreen and a die screen, these are just what I'm putting into play here. Uh, and the main menu screen, of course, you need one of those. Do you need credits and in the instructions? Absolutely you need credits and in instructions. Credits are really important. Even if you think to yourself, well, I made it, so I can't just put that on the main menu. One of the things I've noticed over the years is that my students will often come to me with regret and say, oh, I wasn't happy with that game. And I go, but you made it when? Did you date it? Dating your game is very important. Make it a part of your timeline, your personal timeline. I made this then. That's who I was at this moment in time. And you can't be ashamed of who you were at that moment in time. If your stuff is better now, you go, well, I made that when I was a kid, or I made that early on. There's nothing wrong with putting it inside the timeline. And matter of fact, it's the other way around. If you don't put the date in there, even you might not remember exactly where it fits inside of things. The other part of credits is, is that you may be using other people's materials. Technically, I'm using public domain materials for the Cleveland Museum of Art. Thank you very much, Cleveland Museum of Art. Because they're in the public domain, I'm not required to cite them at all. Uh, if this was an academic project, if I was doing this with students, I would make them cite all of these things, not because they legally have to, but because academic integrity requires that from a plagiaristic perspective, I want to make sure they have credit where credit is due. In my case, I will just globally thank the Cleveland Museum of Art for all of the stuff that they've done. I think it's also important to remind everybody that I made everything else. Even though I made all the sound effects, if I didn't tell you I made all the sound effects, I mean, even watching these videos so you know, but if you didn't, then you might think, oh, he grabbed them from somewhere. And it's important for you to realize, no, I made them. So I'm going to say sound effects are original. I'm going to literally take credit for what I've done, which I think is very useful. When it comes to the instructions, I think the instructions are a little bit different. The instructions are going to be twofold. Number one is going to tell my little bit of a story. Is going to have a sentence or two that gives a narrative. And the second part of it is it's going to allow people to be primed for what the graphics are going to look like. On the big screen, I can be a little bit sillier if I wanted to, but on the instructions, I really want to make it clear what it is that the game's going to do. The win and the die screen are really about to let me take that breather and let me know how I'm doing. And the game over screen, of course, lets me know what's happening. But if I wanted to do something epic where I had, you know, not level after level, but layer after layer or game after game, I could actually have multiple rooms that are different game rooms, and they could navigate all around here. Now, if you've done any web design, this is it. This is like a website, and we're doing most of it via keyboard commands, which, again, this programming, this is going to take all of five minutes. But what's not going to take all of five minutes is I don't have these seven screens, which means it's time to go back to Photoshop. All right, everyone ready? I know you are. Back to Photoshop for seven screens. Now, even though this is a demo, I do plan on publishing it. So I want to make sure that I take what I'm building here rather seriously. Now, generally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by working with this rail shooter game. We've already got a background. We've already got a lot of the assets here. So that makes my life a little bit easier to starting point. I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to hide everything. There we go. Hit everything with the explosion. Put the background layer back on. All right. So now... I, I need to name it, right? I'm going to do a main menu. I've got to name the damn thing. So I've got to come over to my top line and decide what is I'm going to be playing with. Now, this is going to be really fun because I have a lot of considerations to make here. I could just, you know, scribble on this if I didn't care. But I really need to ask myself the question, like, what does the text look like for the rest of this game? We haven't included any text yet. But that means I'm going to have to start p picking fonts and font colors, things that are going to really hold up on this background. So, you know, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to what the game looks like. I just cleared it all, but let's come back over here and uh, share everything else. All right. 
So what am I looking at? Uh, let's see. I've got my little castles. I've got my knights. Um, I've got my my dagger and my um, I've got my knife and I've got my knife. I've got my little explosions. I've got my church painting in the background. That's not the church. It's the artist's church. Um, so let's uh, let's see. What am I going to call the game? Right. So I'll leave this up in the background. Grab my text over here. And I'm going to call it, um, let's see, uh, Night, Night, Night Ranger. No, when knights attack, uh, castle me, king me, um, night fever. <laughs> That's a little BG's humor there. All right. Um, kingdom of the red sky whatever all right kingdom of the red sky it is that is the name of my game now uh what what color font do i want what kind of font do i want i mean let's be practical right now this is Arial black now is Arial black a bad font well this size it is we're gonna make it nice and big let's be doing sound effects by the way kingdom of the red sky um i kind of like it you know now now it's time to turn everything now I'm gonna turn everything else off for a moment hide everything turn this back on king of the red sky all right and uh, maybe I'll put a drop shadow on it see if it'll make it stand out a bit more it's a pretty big drop shadow isn't it a little more opaque. All right. There we go. It's Kingdom of the Red Sky. All right. There we go. I guess Ariel Black will be what we use for this. As long as it's not, um, you know, Comic Sans or, you know, Papyrus, we're okay. All right. So there's Kingdom of the Red Sky. Now, I, I've got to put the instructions in. I've got to stop what I'm doing and make sure that I put in the instructions, right? So it is, uh, uh, let's say the I for instructions. I spell it right. Instructions. C for credits. S start game. Now, as for how big I'm going to make it, I'm just going to sort of, you know, make it so that it looks good. I'm going to blow that up a little bit. Come over here. This is where you start really making sure that your settings were let you last left them in, in Photoshop look good. Let's come over here, and what you notice is is that my text is what I made it, but my 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 uh, over here, the le le between size it should be on auto. That would make my life a little bit easier. It would also be easier if this was set to zero. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Make everything kind of work a little bit better over here. Same thing comes over for this one. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, all of the, the settings are right. Obviously, I only have one line here. It doesn't matter too much. Um, I'm also going to come over here and grab that that drop shadow, copy layer style. And I'm going to paste the layer style over here. Beautiful. Now that's going to pop a little bit more. So I've got this over here. Instructions, credits, start game. Excellent. That's what I needed it to do. All right. And I've got Kingdom of the Red Sky. So... I've got everything I need to get started right here. Uh, notice, by the way, I'm doing it in my same document, which, of course, makes my life much easier. There we go. Same document. Maybe make that a little bigger. And now I've got to ask myself, is that all I want on the title screen? And it could be. I could actually leave it like this. Or I could decide that I'm going to come over here and add some more of the elements that I had previously, which is why it's very good that I name all of my layers so I can sort of turn them on and off and decide what goes where. All right, so I'm going to come over here, and where is my... I'm not going to do an explosion. I do want a hero bullet, but we'll do an enemy first. We'll put in one enemy. Dun, dun, dun. And we'll put in one enemy bullet right around there. Boop, boop, boop. And then where's my hero? Where's my hero? Oh, there's my hero. So we'll come over here. 
and we'll have him firing a hero bullet. Doo, doo, doo. In this case, we will, I'm gonna duplicate my hero bullet because I'm gonna rotate it. I don't wanna alter it, oops. All right, I'm gonna rotate it like that. Here's my hero bullet on the screen. There they are, and I'll come over here. And to make it even more fun, I'll grab the explosion, which I'll put right in between the two. And we'll go something like this. And like this. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so there you go. So now I have sort of my 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 epic version of this. Now, I'll be honest with you, if, if, if I, if, Really, I would go with the larger graphics, um, something a little bit more fancier than this. And I think I'm using, as I'm watching this, I'm even considering doing that. I'm com considering coming over here and going down to my demo where my original pieces are. Remember all my original pieces? I save them as high res, which is why I did that on purpose so that I could come back over here and do that. So I can come over here and grab the, um, uh, the big version of this, right? So that means I would turn off the uh, hero. And I'm gonna turn off the enemy. And by doing that, using this giant version, I can actually be a little bit more dramatic on the uh, initial page. Again, the front page is meant to be sort of, you know, uh, this sort of an epic sort of a visionary type thing. So I come over here and grab the, uh, the enemy. and bring him down to about the same size. Yes, just like that. And then I can probably turn off these other layers altogether. Yeah, that's nice, isn't that nice? So there's all this design that you end up having to do on top of it and it's all just to make your game more kind of fanciful and fun along the way. Now, let's go back to that idea. Did I need to put in the bases? Did the bases add something to that? And I think the answer is, if I get them lined up, they would. Come over here. One of my favorite uh, features in Photoshop is that if you go into the, the uh, ruler, you can drag down and you can grab, um, you can grab guides whenever you want. It's, I love that feature. And of course, you can grab the guide and just disappear. All right, so there's my there's my epic first screen. So I'm going to come over here, first save it, and I'm going to save as, and this is going to be um, a PNG called menu-main. Yay. One down, six to go. We're like, wait a second, didn't you do one? Technically, it's five to go, but we're going to get back to it. It's going to be six to go before you know it. All right. So let's move on to an easy one, credits. Now, this is the best part. I'm going to come over here to this kingdom of the red sky. I'm going to duplicate this layer, hide the original, and I'm going to change this one to say credits. Oh, if only I had centered this text in the first place. All right, so I can bring it over. All right, credits right there. The credits is good. And I'm going to come over here to this one, duplicate this layer. And what other text is on this screen for sure? And that is um, S is not to start the game. It's S for main menu. Return to main menu. Now, what else do we need on this screen right here? I think I'll leave those babies on the screen right there. I need another text box, but this one's going to be original. All right. Um, programmed and designed by Chip. Jared Bendis, um, Spring 2020, Demonstration for Game 216,
Cleveland Institute. Institute. I spell everything wrong. Institute of Art. That's why you want to type everything first in other ways. For the time, Jared Bass, Spring 2018. Okay, everything just froze on me, but that's okay. I can handle that. Ah, the old Laura Mibson. Let's delete those funky ones that just appeared out of nowhere. All graphics from the open access collection. of the Cleveland Museum of Art. All sounds and music by Jared Bendis. Watch this game being you can watch this game being developed, developed on YouTube, Twitch, or YouTube username Jared X2. Pro design by Jared Bennett, Spring 2020, Demonst demonstration for game 216, uh, Cleveland Institute of Art, all um, graphics from the open access collection of the Cleveland Museum of Art, all sound and music by Jared Bendis. You can watch this game being developed on Twitch or YouTube, username JaredX2. All right, anything else that I need to put in here? I can thank you fine folks for contributing now. And then, of course, if I wanted to, I can decide how much room do I have to make it bigger. Now we've got a problem. The problem we run into is a, a, a standard design problem. It happens quite frequently when you're doing this type of work. Um, the text doesn't show up perfectly. Now, while the drop shadow is great from the credits or the S to main menu, the drop shadow isn't necessarily something I would really want to do here. Um, notice that I put the drop shadow in. Go ahead. Oops. Put it on the wrong layer. Try that again. Come over here and put it on this one here. Uh, paste layer style. And ask myself, is that enough? It probably is. But I, I think that a drop shadow might just be a bit much for the block of text. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get rid of the block. Uh, and I'm going to come over here. And instead, I'm going to uh, make a new layer. Layer, new layer. And on this, I'm going to put a nice box. Beautiful box right here. And I'm going to fill it with black. Straightforward. Black box. Now that I have this black box, which, by the way, I'm going to put under the text, I could do that. And that works just fine. Oops. Or... I can take that black box and I can change its opacity. So I can make it a little bit like that, something that'll be easier to see. So you get the flavor of the image through it, but I've got this 55% opaque black box underneath it. Now I've got to ask myself, am I happy with the way things are lined up? And the answer is no, I'd rather just, oops, wrong, wrong text box. This, let me put these two together, this and this, and then I can decide where to put this. And I think that's a little bit easier to read. Now, let's double check what I've written because, again, I'm really trying to do this all in one sitting. Credits, S, return to main menu. Programs, I think that and could be an ampersand. And designed by Jared Bendis, spring 2020. Um, demonstration uh, for game 216. The Cleveland Institute of Art, spring 2020. All graphics from the Open Access Collection. And I will put the line break in there of the Cleveland Museum of Art. All sounds of music right here in Bendis. You can watch this game being developed 
uh, on Twitch or YouTube, username Karenx2. All right, so now I've created a credit screen. I'm happy with that credit screen. Are you happy with the credit screen? I'm happy with the credit screen. File, save as, PNG, menu, credits. Next, we do it again, yay, all right. Let's do it again, but this time we're going to come over here. Now here's the best part. Don't have to change the S to return to main menu. It's already there. Now the part that says credits, which is over here, I'm going to duplicate. Notice how crazy and complex this list is getting, but that's all right. I'm naming everything properly. Instructions. Happy with that. Now what are my instructions? So this is kind of where it gets uh, funky or at least a little bit tricky. I've got two things that I've got to deal with right now. Uh, the first is um, the actual, like, you know, up, down, fire. The other is, do you, how much do you explain? And when it comes to the instructions, am I going to explain that you're penalized for letting things behind you or getting things in front of you or all little things that we've, that we've decided to do? Or do I let some of that just be organic? You, you see it happening, so you figure it out. You hear it happening, so you figure it out. So that's part of, the, part of one. The other is, is don't tell people how the game, how to win the game. Tell them how to play the game. There's a very big difference between strategy and gameplay. And I think a lot of times people spend so much time trying to tell people how to win the game that, like, let people figure it out for themselves. That's really part of it. The other is the story. And I've got to go back to sort of put, putting the story together. And to put the story together, I am going to come over here and I'm going to duplicate the pieces that I, that I need. I'm going to leave the S return to main menu, but I'm going to duplicate this one. Um, so this is the um, credits box. And this is the instructions box. Turn off the credits box. And this is the programmed and designed. I'm going to duplicate this layer. Um, and I'm going to hide that one for now as well. Now, why am I doing this is because I need to have more, as a room to work. And so for me to give myself room to work, I'm going to take these two items, the ones that I'm keeping for the instructions page, I'm going to come up over here. And I need to tell my story. Um, and remember, you're a blank in a blank, trying to blank. You are a noble knight defending the blue keep from the evil red knights. You are a noble knight defending the blue keep from the evil red knights. Fire your blades to protect yourself and your keep. Kill as many of the red knights. We'll get back to that. As you can. And hit their keep as often as you can. Only the only the strong of heart will be victorious. Ooh. All right. Now, I've been doing this is just typing text with lines in it. I hate doing this. As a matter of fact, for this type of text, I'm going to come over here and I am going to convert to paragraph text. That's going to make my life hell or did it. I think it's OK. Paragraph text is really cool. What paragraph text does is it allows me to grab a text box and I can actually change the size of that text box. And what's even neater is, is that if I do this and all my text becomes continuous. So I can actually don't have to worry about the separation or the pagination just yet, uh, which is very useful. Whenever you're working with text boxes, by the way, make sure that hyphenate is unchecked. Otherwise, weird hyphenations happen, which I hate, by the way. And then, of course, I can do justi justified text if I want. Never center text. Never center text. Center text is fine for like instructions or even returning to a menu. But if you want someone to read it, you just don't center the text. Center text is unreadable said it before, I'll say it again. Now, 
What's nice about this is, is that I come over here. If I drag my rectangle, I can actually uh, change the rectangle any way I want. And then I can even change the size. Maybe I can make that a little bit smaller, 24 point, and I can see how things are. You are a noble knight defending, defending the blue keep from the evil, oh, spelled it wrong, from the evil red knights. How many of you saw that? Anyway, uh, fire your blades to protect yourself and your keep. Uh, don't let their daggers hit you or all right uh, uh, you're a noble knight defending the blue keep uh, you're a noble knight defending the blue keep from the evil red knights don't let their daggers through fire your blades back yourself and your keep um I can get rid of that. Kill as many of the Red Knights as you can and hit their keep as often as you can. Only the Strong of Heart will be victorious. There you go. Could it be better? Sure. Is it tragic? Not at all. Now, let's get back to this next part. Um, I don't need this box to be... I don't need this black box to open. Oops. I forgot about that new Photoshop. Got to hold the shift key down. Otherwise, I'm constraining. All right, so now the keeps are on the screen. I need, what do I need? I need four elements. I need hero bullet. I'll use hero bullet copy because I like that's that's curved. I need enemy, enemy bullet. And I need hero. Great. So I come over here and I come over here. And I come over here and I hit undo. And I come over here. All right. And then I've got all my goodies here. That's a nice thing. And all I got to do is add my instructions. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to be clever. I need to. What are the instructions? It's use the arrow keys to move up and down, space bar to fire. That's it. That's all you got to say. Everything else is visually obvious at this point. So I'm going to come over here and add a new text box. Now, again, we already know that... Um, yes. Use the arrow keys to move up and down. Space bar to fire. I have, uh, I'm an old man, and I use an exclamation point way too often. I know it. I know it. I completely... Now, this text... This text, I feel comfortable centering because this text makes a little bit more sense. Use the arrow keys to move up and down. And then I can say, press the space bar to fire. Get rid of all punctuation or, nah, that's right. Use the arrow keys to move up and down, press the space bar to fire. Or to shoot, or to throw, or whatever. Notice, by the way, that instead of putting another black box in, I just placed it where I can see it. That makes sense. One, and now I can fine tune a little bit more. One, two, three, four. I can grab these and move them to a little bit further down. That means I can come over here, and grab these two, and move these a little bit further down, so that my spacing feels good. Alrighty then. Also, by the way, one of my favorite things, one, two, three, four, selecting those four layers, I can then center them. There we go. And that gives you a real nice centered feel. And of course, we've got the, we'll leave these over here. I can grab these one. I grab one, two, and I can center those two. I have barely anything. Great. Instructions. One of my students once typed in instructions. Drove me crazy. You are a noble knight defending the blue keep from the evil red knights. Don't let their daggers... See, that's why you double check. Don't let their daggers through. Fire your blades to protect yourself and your keep. Kill as many of the red knights as you can and hit their keep as often as you can. Only the strong of heart will be victorious. Victorious. Use the arrow keys, move up and down. Press the space bar to fire. S, and of course, I'm going to go back and I'm going to change the and to an ampersand because sometimes I just look with it. It looks a little bit better. Uh, S to return to main menu. Done. Done. File. Save. 
file, save as. Now we've got the instruction screen done. PNG, menu, instructions. Oof, look at that. Think about that. Now we have four of our seven screens done. So what are the, the last of the screens that we need? Well, we need game over, level up, and you died. So for these screens, I need to remember that I need to leave room. And I need to leave room to put on the most important things. The score, the waves, and the lives. Now, the game over screen, you don't put the lives on the screen because the lives is zero. You don't have to say live zero. But for the other screens, the win and the, li the die screen, you want to know how many lives you have left, what your score is, and how many waves have you made it through. Kind of a sense of accomplishment in terms of what you're trying to do. Because remember, you could spend your entire game just sitting on the first uh, level, avoiding the one last one you keep hitting their keep and scoring. So the score is going to be very, very unique. Remember, if you didn't have these strange parameters, if it was literally just the only thing that you scored on was hitting the bad guys, that means each each level will be the worth the exact same amount. But because you get points for hitting their bullet, because you get points for hitting their base, because you lose points when they hit you, because you your base, and because you lose points when the bullets leave the screen, there are lots of different ways of, of getting a really interesting score depending on how you strategize your own play. And that's what makes a good game. If every level is worth the exact same amount of currency, then you wouldn't even have to keep score. You'd have to say, how many levels did you hit? It goes back to the idea of thinking about Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird just tells you what your score is, but how many lives you get in Flappy Bird? And if you say one, you're absolutely wrong. You, play, you don't play Flappy Bird one time. You play it over and over again. Flappy Bird is like a game that has a million lives in it. It's just you don't know when it's over yet. And you want to see how well you score at any particular level. So you've got to kind of keep looking at it from that perspective. Our next screen is going to be the Game Over screen. And the reason we're going to do that is, is that we already have S to return to main menu on the screen. So why not not have to turn that off? So let's come back over here. We have S to return to main menu. There's the word instructions. And we're going to duplicate that layer again. And again, the reason I duplicate the layer is, is I know where everything is lined up perfectly if I do this. Game over. All right, game over is there. Now, what don't I need? I've got S to return to menu menu. I've got game over. Now, I will need uh, to, to sort of move things around a little bit. This is my instructions bar. I'm going to duplicate that layer, and I'm going to hide it. And this is now going to be my game info bar. And that game info bar, holding the shift key down so I can move it, that game info bar is going to be right over here. This is going to be the bar that's going to be on the screen so that I can write information on the screen where I can write things like score, lives, health, things like that. Does that make sense? It will as we move a little bit further. All right, what else do I need to get rid of for now? Uh, you don't need to use the arrows anymore. But I do need to somehow create sort of an epic ending to my game. So let me come over here and turn off my these things. Oops. Uh, yeah. So now I need to ask myself what. Let me turn on the bases again. I like having the bases on the screen. All right. So now this is game over. This is fatal death. Uh, what does fatal death look like? All right. So let's come back over here and we're going to put in uh, the hero again. There he is. There's the hero. All right. And uh, since he's fatally dead, I'm going to rotate him until he's on his back. I'm going to shrink him down. All right. There's fatal death. And what I need from him is I need something horrible like the dagger beautiful high resolution dagger stuck in him there you go and of course if i want to make it look like it's stuck in him i'm going to make sure it's underneath him right there you go ta-da or I could even embed it further. If I go the other way around, I could put them on top of him. And then I can embed it. I have to rotate a little bit more. So obviously, you have these strange tangencies. Right? And then decide where I'm embedding it. Like that. And then I would have to 
rasterize the layer so that it looks like it's cut into him. Then delete that part of it, right? And then maybe even paint in, paint in some blood. There you go. There's my game over screen. Now I'm still not sure about this box over here. So I'm gonna come over here to this box and give myself a little bit room to work. Remember, whatever box you put on the screen, you're gonna have to use it later, but I want to be consistent. So I'm gonna put it right there. There you go. Nice, good old fashioned game over. All right, done. Next, file, save, file, save as. PNG, and we're going to call this a menu, even though it's not really a menu. Menu, and this is game over. Well, it really is a menu because it's got the, the 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 text on it, so technically it kind of falls into Menuville. All right, so there you go. And see, the thing about these screens are is that you can't really see this graphic very well when it's this big, but when you see it on the screen here, it gives you that sense of oh, that's what I'm looking at, which gives you a little bit of sense of it feeds into itself. All right, now we're doing it again, but this time instead of game over, we're gonna be die. So I'm gonna duplicate this. It's gonna look very similar, right? All right, and this is going to be, not you die, we call it, you die, you know. You've been hit, aha. All right, so you've been hit. Um, but let's go back to the other things that we need to change. Instead of S return to main menu, we're going to duplicate this and we're going to call this S to return to game. There you go. Now we still need the box. We need the box here for, for text, but the you've been hit looks a little bit more epic here than I would like because you sort of, you're, you know, dead, dead. So maybe what we're going to do is, is we're going to take the, um, this epic version. Oh, I've not been a good boy and I've not been naming my labels, my layers properly. But maybe I'm going to come over here, duplicate this layer. And instead of it being like embedded in your head, we're going to come over here. We're going to rotate it so that it's kind of just like over here. And we're going to drag it underneath, something like that. So it doesn't look like you've been hit too badly. Or maybe. You don't have it at all. You've been hit. It's just you're off to the side. You know, you're off to the side. We don't actually get to see that it's, it's you know, embedded in you. And if that's the case, then I probably should come over here and grab another one, which, of course, has the tip in it still. Rotate it all the way around. Shrink it down and put it over here. You've been hit. And maybe even, da, 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 where's my hero? There's my hero. I keep duplicating these things because I want to make sure if I change my mind later that I don't have to go back and sort of reinvent the wheel. So I should name these things accordingly. But I'm going to come back over here like this. And then this one's going to come around like this. And so it's like this on the ground. It's like this over here. You know, you've been hit. You see it there, this like off to the side, like, you know, there you go. So I'm going to come over here and save that. Save as PNG menu die. It's really not death, but you know, we got it. Menu die. Excellent. Great. And now we have one more of these to do. Of course, this time it's not you. It's not you. It's me. Not me, it's you. I come over here to you've been hit and duplicate the layer. Now, you've been hit. I can come over here and do good job. You know, something like that. And now for this one, I need to have the enemy bad. Now, did I save this one high res? It'd be great if I did. I didn't. But you know what? It'll take two seconds for me to make that again. So I'm going to grab the full version of the enemy and the full version of the hero bullet. 
Apparently, I don't have a full version of the hero, but I, come on. Did I not, did I overwrite it? Was Oh, there it is. I was going to say, I am better than that. There we go. So let's come over here and do that. Where's that hero bullet that I just threw in there by mistake? I think hit escape. That's good. So I come over here and grab this. Make it smaller. There it is. Come over here and grab this. Now you know why we kept the high-res graphics, so we can use them later. So it can inform the way our gameplay looks. Like this. All right, good job. Then I can come over here and add another layer in here. And add some blood. All right, here's my blood. Right, and then there you go. So I can come over here, file, save as, oops. Do I want to capitalize job? It's a difficult question. It's a very difficult question. No, I don't. File, save as, PNG, menu, level up win, whatever you're going to call it. Now, this is where it gets interesting. I have been a bad boy, and I'm going to take a moment, and I'm going to be a good boy, and I'm going to take a look at this a little bit more, um, a little bit more carefully than I had before. So let's take a look at this screen for a moment. I have uh, this one over here, which is the good job blood. And what else do I have? I've got good job, good job blood, and these three elements. I have the game info box. The game info box, and somewhere I have the words S to return to game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be, and I'm actually going to do what I really should have done before. I'm going to highlight these layers, and I'm going to go layer, new, group from layers, I'm going to call this win. And there you go. So I can hide that and I can come back over here and take a look. I'm going to sort of deconstruct what I should have done earlier, which would be, of course, the 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 die, right? So what, what does the die screen have? Well, somewhere now the funny part about the die screen is is for me to do the die screen, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to duplicate this one and this one, because these two things. Uh, exist outside of it. So I'm going to bring them out of the bring them out of the window and hide them. Oops, I should not have done that either, by the way. You know why I shouldn't have done that? Because I hit paste. Never hit paste. I should have. So these two layers I should delete. Good. So these two layers, I want to duplicate the layers. I hit copy and paste, which is exactly what you don't want to do. So I have those, which are the game info screen and the uh, S to return to the game. So that means that I can build the die screen now. So what is that? What came on the die screen? Well, uh, this is why we go through it all and look for that. And uh, not that one, not that one, that one. No, not that one. It's this one and this one. It's that one and this one. That's right. That one and this one. And where else do we have on the screen there? So we have put those two. Kind of drag them down. And yes, I'm doing literally housekeeping in front of you. And I'm okay doing that because I should have done it. I want to be very explicit about like why you spend the time doing these things. Because you want to make sure that as you go forward, this stuff makes sense. And you know what? I actually didn't do. Did I not? Did I not duplicate the layer that says um, you've been hit? Yes, I did. Where is it? I well, didn't call it die. I said, oh, there it is. You've been hit. All right. So there's my you've been hit. So all of a sudden, this is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. And I can do layer, new, group from layers. And this would be die. Beautiful. I can hide that one. 
right? So now I can do it again. Now, which of these layers do I need? I don't need, I need the, um, uh, I need this, the info box at, at this point, because the other ones are going to be different. So I'm going to duplicate this layer and I'm going to take it out of here. And yeah, I'm okay with the fact that some of these are called game info two and stuff. That's a little bit easier. All right. Somebody stuttering on me. Computer is unhappy tonight. I wonder why. All right, so there's game info two, which I need with game over. Open, hide the die screen. Here's game over. What else do I need? I need, um, what else do I need? Somewhere there's S return to main menu. I need that. And the reason I'm doing this is not just because I am I told you to be good about these things. Wait, do I need that one? No, I don't need that one. I think that was just extraneous. The reason I'm doing this is that Later on, if I make a mistake, this will all be right here for me to work on. And that's important. You don't want to sit here because if I don't do this now while I'm making it, I'll never be able to do it later. I'll just, my head will be so far up my ass it wouldn't be funny. Layer, new, group from layers, and this is game over. Excellent. All right, see, it's, it's a lot, but it goes a lot faster now because there's fewer layers. So there's game over, there's die, there's win. And let's come back over here and realize that there's something in game over I need, which is S to return to main menu. So I'm going to duplicate that layer, pop that baby back up there, all the way out of the folder. There we go. And so I can hide game over and we can do um, credits. Credits is an easy one. Because I can pull over here and put in credit box and this baby. And now my credits are all together. One, two, drag it there. One, two, three, four. Come over here to this. There's my credits. That makes sense. So I can grab all those elements. And I can actually, I'm be really funny. I'm going to duplicate this one now since I know I'm going to need it. This is the return to main menu. Hide that. Grab these four elements. Layer, new, group from layers. Credits. So now I've got my credits. Turn that baby off. And I can go to instructions. All right, so I've got the instructions. One, two. Um, there's my instructions. There's my instructions box. Oops, that's not the instructions. That was a mistake. There's the instructions right over here. And now I've got to turn the graphics back on. Now, some of these graphics. Nope. Nope. All right, so which which graphics was I using? Not that one. I was using Hero Bullet Copy. That's right. Now I know where I'm at. I wasn't using that one. I was using the Enemy Bullet. Enemy. Somewhere there's a hero. And one last bit of text, which was... One last bit of text, which was up here. All right. So that is the reconstructed version of that. So I can grab one. I grab those two items and bring them over here. And these four items and bring them over here. And these six items and bring them over here. And then I can grab that seven items. There's a instruction screen is quite epic. And bring it over here. And then like before, I know I'm going to need to use this one one more time. So I'm going to duplicate the press S to main menu. I'll put over here. And now if I grab all of these layers, highlight them, layer, new, group from layers, instructions, which I can then hide. Boom. Actually, I didn't need another one of those, did I? No, I didn't. Look at that. Oops, I put something in there I shouldn't have, though. The bases. I should take the bases out of there. Those are always on the screen. Oh, that's right. So now that I can turn off the instructions, what do I have left? I have Kingdom of the Red Sky of the Red Sky. And I have Hero and the enemy. As I put them over here. I've got the instructions over here. I'm not even using that one. I can get rid of that layer since I know I'm not using it. And so now I have one, two, three, four. I have these layers here, 
layer, new, group from layers, main menu. So I spent a few minutes cleaning up my act. I'm proud of that. I don't need this one because I didn't use that as well. So I can come over here and I can say instructions, main menu, credits, game over, die, win. I spent a few minutes doing that. I spent, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes doing that. I really, I don't mind doing that. It makes this document cleaner. It makes it useful for me later on. Technically, I should even go through and clean up this document even more. But again, you want to do it while you're doing it. You want to spend the time. Because if there's a mistake and I have to go and reconstruct all this thing, I just won't and I'll be in a pissy mood. All right. Now we're going to implement most of what I just did. I say most of, but not all of. Oh, well, maybe all of. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add the rooms, the uh, the sprites for the rooms. So I'm going to create sprite. I'm going to import. Luckily, they're all named menu. That's why I named them all menus. They'd be next to each other. Menu credits. I'm going to do sprite underscore credits. Do I need to worry about anything beyond here? No, because everything, it's just, it's going to be st strictly a sprite. Do it again. Create sprite. Import. Sprite menu die. Sprite menu die. Do it again. Only have to do this six times. Import. I always import it first so I know what I'm looking at. Game over. Game over. Do it again. Import. Instructions. Do it again. Import. Level up. Do it again. Import. Uh, main menu. Main menu. Now let's take a look real fast. One, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, uh, Sprite Background is the seventh, and uh, which we'll be changing a little bit, by the way, but we're going to save it for another video. We're going to save it for that. All right, so I've made my sprites. That, again, sometimes it's just a repetitive motion. You do the same thing over and over. You get used to it. Don't worry about it. All right, now let's go to my rooms. I have one room called Room Game. I need create a room. Room underscore main menu. Oops. Room underscore main menu. I'm going to go back to my background layers. I'm going to set it to be the main menu. And then, to not kill myself, I'm going to click the instances layer now. Because you can't do anything on the background layer. Do it again. Create room. Room underscore credits. Background. Grab the credits background. Click on instances again. Click on instances again. When you go to drag something in the background layer and it doesn't work, it's because you need to be on instances. So just give you do it now. Uh, room underscore instructions. Again, background, change the sprite to the instructions background, and then go back to the instances layer so that you know where you left off. So, all right, do it again. Create room. Oops, what did I just say? Create room. Room underscore game over. Background, sprite, game over. Instances. Do it again. Create room. Room underscore die. Background, sprite. Where is it? Where's die? Oh, I wrote menu die. All right. That's why you got to pay attention. Instances. And lastly, create room, room 
underscore level up or win or whatever you decide to call it. Maybe you'll make levels. Maybe we'll get there. And then instances. Now, we have all of these rooms, and they're really empty rooms. They're rooms with sprites in them. That's not that exciting. The trick is whatever room is first is the one that gets launched first. So I'm going to drag main menu up over here so that main menu is now, oops, that's, let me come back over. Oops, stop that. I don't want to be a child. I want to be over. There we go. Main menu is first. The order of the other ones don't matter unless you use the next room, previous room feature, which we're not going to use. So we don't have to worry about that. So I come over here. I hit rewind. I mean, rewind. I hit save. I hit run. Rewind. You can rewind a game. And like magic. Aha, I'm in my game. Kingdom of the Red Sky. Of course, nothing works. And I can't get to my game anymore. I didn't program any of this. So now we have to quickly program this. Now, programming this sort of navigation is actually relatively straightforward. The trick is we're going to be creating a different type of object that we haven't made before. If you'll notice, all of the objects that you see here, all of these objects have sprites associated with them. Right now, I'm going to make an object with no sprite associated with it, which is going to drive a little batty at first. I'm going to close Photoshop so that my computer is a little bit happier resource-wise. There we go. That always makes the computer happier. All right. So if I go back to my main menu, there we go. I for instructions, C for credits, S to start game. So I'm going to make a new object, and the object is going to be a main menu object. Object underscore... main menu. This is going to be where we put all the cool stuff that we have in our main menu. Now, if I click over here and click add event, we're going to put the three events that I need. The first event is going to be, now, it's going to be key up. Remember, when you're doing a user interface, it's when you let go of the key, not when you press the key, and definitely not when you're holding the key down. So key up, key up what? Key up letter S. And what are we going to do when we press the key up letter S is we're going to jump to a room. So we're going to click on go to room. Which room are we going to go to? We're going to go to the game room. You know what I'm also going to do? I'm going to play a sound effect. Which one? Hmm. What's a good sound effects for clicking in this? Let's take a listen. Uh, hero no shoot. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good noise. What about when it leaves the room? What was that one again? Boop, boop, boop. Oh, that's a good one too. Or I can make a new sound effect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the hero leaves room. I like that one. Let's go back to object main menu, and I'm gonna say, you know what? Before you, when you press that button, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to play the sound of hero leaves room. Boop. We don't loop it. Now, the cool thing is, is I can do this all over again. But remember, I've already created this, this, um, this event. Why don't I just duplicate it? But instead of saying key up S, I'm going to say key up uh, C. Right? And instead of going to the room game, I'm going to say go to room credits. See? A lot less to type. And there's the boop. Do it again. Instead of, I'm going to duplicate the event. And instead of key up C, I'm going to say it is key up I, and then of course I'm going to say this is to room instructions. See how copying an event or duplicating events is going to make your life a lot easier? Of course you do. Now, i got to go to the main menu. I have to make sure I'm on the instance layer, and all i got to do is drop this object anywhere in the room. And a little question mark, by the way, is where it currently is. It doesn't matter where in the room you put it. There's no object associated with it, and that's okay. It's okay. We do this a lot. Now we can come over here and do this again. Uh, instead of object main menu, when I go to the credit screen, S to return to main menu. When I go to the instruction screen, it's S to return to main menu. And when I go to the game over screen, it's S to return to the main menu. I need a single object that does one thing. What does it do? It, it's called object S to main menu. Interestingly enough, let me come over here. I'm going to do key up, key up letter S. Again, make sure it's key up. 
and we know that we want to go to which room? It's the main menu room, and which sound? The sound of Hero Leaves. And I can come over here to my credit screen, and I can drop that in, S to main, doesn't matter where I put it. I can come over here to my instruction screen, and I can drag it in over here, S to main, doesn't matter where I put it. And I can go to my game over screen, and I'm going to pretend that I forgot to go back to the instances layer. And if I drag it in, it's going to go, I don't think so. So you go back to the instances layer, and you drag it in, and now we've got that. So now we have quite a few of this going on, right? Let's think about this. We have the, uh, everything is ready except for the end of our game. But we've already prepared for that as well. Let's think about that for a second. Let's think about that for a second. When do we go to the level up screen? We know that. We already had that, we already had that coded. It's in one of our objects, isn't it? Which object is it in? Right? Remember when the enemy bullet, then it goes to enemy dead. And then the enemy dead leaves the room. Right? And then when the enemy dead leaves the room, what do we say? We say when the enemy dead leaves the room, then it counts how many enemies there are. And if it's the last enemy, it restarts the, the game. Otherwise, it destroys the instance. Now, here's where it gets a little interesting. Yes, it does it when it's outside of the room. So that means it's the last thing. So this would be like an animation end because outside the room is when it end. We don't want to restart the game, do we? No, we don't want to restart the game. What we want to do is we want to go to what room? Instead of restarting the game, we want to go to the room called Level Up. So the last enemy left, and we went to the room Level Up. There you go. Next, when do we die? No, we're not going to do game over yet because, or we can we can either choose to do game over or we can choose to do die. But when are we going to die? Well, we're going to die uh, when, let's see, when the, where's, where's the enemy? Where's the hero? Where is the hero? Where is the hero death? There it is. When the hero death animates, we put in the restart game. We don't want to restart the game. What do we want to do? We want to go to a room. Technically, this we're going to put in a lot of code here. We're going to put in the, is this the last life code? But let's come over here to room die. So there'll be no game over tonight because we don't have any lives. If we don't have any lives, we'll play forever. There's only going to be one error message that's going to happen. There's going to be one funny little error that's going to happen, which I'll have to fix almost right away. You ready? Let's play the game. So many little little things, but you got to sort of logic your way through it. Let's see if I did it all right. All right. Instructions. Boop. Return to main menu. Boop. 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 Credits. Boop. Return to main menu. Boop. Everything works. Start game. <laughs> now, watch this. Oh, I forgot to return the game. I forgot to put a code on those screens to return to game. I forgot that. Let's come over here and make another object. That's not the mistake I thought I was going to make. But that's a good one. S to return to game. Add an event. Key pressed. Letter. Not key pressed. Key up. Letter S. And we know exactly what goes over here. You play the sound called Hero Leaves. And you jump to the room called Game. And now this goes into what room? It goes into several rooms. It goes into die. And it goes into level up. Excellent. So let's save that. We are so very close to finding one last little mistake that is very common in these games as we play.
So now I'm gonna go back to the game. And can you hear it? First, let's see if I can hear it. Let me try. So every time, oh my god, every time I go into the room, I start playing the audio soundtrack again. And because every time I go in the room and plays the soundtrack again, I never told it to stop. So the question is. How do I navigate the soundtrack that's looping to not be so flipping annoying all the time? And there's actually a really straightforward way of doing this. When did we actually play the soundtrack? What, what object did we put that on? And let's go back to that real fast. So I think we put that on the one object that was always in the room. I think we put that on the hero base, didn't we? Yes. We put the music loop right here. Well, you know what we're going to do before we loop the music? We're going to stop all audio. So this is a nice little thing that we do is before we ever loop an audio file. All right, by the way, we get to stop that audio. But I'm going to come over here and realize that this is the beginning of the game. This is the beginning of the room. I want to make sure that nothing's lingering from the previous rooms. So I'm going to stop all the audio. Matter of fact, these two commands, a stop audio and play audio, I'm actually going to put this also in the um, object main menu in the create command, because I want the soundtrack to exist everywhere. And what's gonna be nice about this is, if all goes well, and I think I'll bear one more mistake that I'm gonna listen for now that I can listen for it. <laughs> now if I go to the instruction screen, boop, it's playing the same audio. But when I go back to the main menu, it resets the music. Credits, it's playing the same audio. Main menu, it restarts the audio. Playing the main, going to the game. Again, playing the same audio, but starts a Let's quiet. See if I can win the level. And there's a Hey, we're missing an audio file. We didn't have that audio file before, but we do now. So remember, right before we jump to the other room, or even in the other room, we can put in that positive noise. So remember, we have the enemy dead, and the enemy dead leaves the room, and when it leaves the room, what do we do? We say go to level up. We don't want it just to go to level up. We want to play a sound. What sound do we want to play? We want to play the wind sound, of course. What is that wind sound? Where is it? Uh, clear level. All right, so now we have the clear level sound in there. And this is everything but game over. Again, we can't do game over because programmatically, we're not there yet. Wait, did I just do two oh notes? Some oh no when I get hit. Boing, boing. Boing. All right, so that tells me I made a mistake. Good job. Oh, yeah. So I got the good job in there. Just by the way, I actually lit, I actually got to the game over here. Yeah, ooh, is what happens when I get killed. Good job. There you go. And of course, this goes on forever. 
So exhausting. All right. So let us fix that one last bit of audio. Let's fit that one last bit of audio. Oops. What just happened? Apparently, I needed to say something to audition. Well, yes, audition you may use the, the game. So we're going to go over here and we're going to launch that one last audio file that was a little bit quieter than I wanted, which was the... Um, Enemy base hit. Let's look at that. File open. Why are you opening? All right, let's come over here. Enemy base hit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come over and make that a little bit louder. I can't make it too much louder because. That part's already as loud as you can go without distorting it. So I have to make a decision. <laughs> see, I see that that part's that part's bad. I can't hurt this. I could come over here and do this though. <laughs> so I'm going to take the first half and make it bigger without ruining it. And the second half, and make it bigger without ruining it. All right, that's as far as I can push it. All right, let's leave there. Close this. Back to Game Maker. And just load that sound effect back in. So... Find your sounds. Go to object enemy base hit and load it. Object enemy base hit. All right, let's see what this sounds like. <laughs> It's a big question right now. I've got one last question I've got to do with is, oh no, better for a death sound or better for whatever. So part of me really wants to come over here and swap sound effects. Part of me wants to come over to the object um, hero base and change the sound effect. Wait, I didn't put it there, did I? Wait, enemy bullet? Where's the enemy bullet? Enemy bullet. And instead of changing the hero base to that, I want to change the hero base to hero hit. And then I want to do hero death which would be when the object, where's the hero? Object hero hits the, no. When the object hero, when the object enemy, I don't remember where everything is. No, enemy, enemy bullet, right. When the object enemy bullet hits the hero, it plays hero hit. I think I'm gonna change that to hero base hit. And see if this makes a little bit better. Does it make more sense that it goes ooh ooh for the for the for the bass and I don't go the ooh ooh at the very end? I did not do this right. Uh, let's do that again. When the enemy hits the hero... Oh, th this is where the enemy hits the hero base. I just completely just redid it. When the enemy hits the hero base, it should play object hero hit. Right. When the enemy... When the enemy bullet hits the hero base, it plays the hero hit sound. 
right? And when that's where that is, when the enemy, okay. So when the hero, no, when the hero hits the wall, where does the hero hit the enemy bullet? When the enemy bullet hits the hero base, oh, that's right, we put the ghost in. It's when the hero ghost hits. So that's where it plays hero hit. Now it plays hero base hit. Now what else did I change? Did I change something I shouldn't have? Hero hits wall. Hero bullet. Here enemy base hit. That's correct. Enemy bullet. Hero hit. That's correct. Hero death. Nothing there. Enemy death. Clear level. Hero base. Doesn't do anything. Enemy base. All right. Let's go back and see what I've done. Hear what I've done. <laughs> Boing. Sounds a bit right. Boing. 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 Okay, now I gotta wait for some. Boing. Boing. It's killing me. Okay, definitely like the ooh sound. The reason I like the sound that is because it says ooh to God, and when you die, it says ooh no, so it's only the verbal part. Boing, good job. Yeah, that works much better. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Now, interestingly enough, I don't know if I'm happy with the way those look on the screen. Um, because I got to pop back on the screen there. So I may actually remove these from the final version because I don't like the way that they pop into place, which is why um, when the talk with the gameplay is loud enough that it can't be heard, also I thank you. Um, so I'll turn that off. All right. So I don't necessarily know if I like the way those little things appear on the side of the screen. So what I need to do is, uh, is do that. Let's take a look at that. So let's go back to Photoshop and uh, re-render those. Uh, and again, how many screens is it? Not many. If that's why we, again, we did this for a reason, so that we wouldn't have to do this over and over again. So it justifies why we have to do good behaviors. Thanks for joining us, by the way, if you've been watching. When you talk with the game playing, it's loud enough that you can't be heard. It's not the end of the world um, that you can't hear me. So... What I've decided here is, is that I don't like these bases appearing on the screen during the gameplay. So when I go to die, I want it to look like that. So I'm going to save as PNG, and I'm just gonna overwrite the other one, and this would be the die screen. Oh, and I appreciate that you thought I wanted to know I wasn't being flippant. And when you win, file, save as, PNG, level up. There you go. And lastly, game over. Ooh. Gotta turn the other one off. That's rough rough right there. And that would be game over. Save. Am I echoing by the way? Does it echo for you or no? All right, close this one. Back over here. And let's reload those three. So menu die, import. <coughs> there we go. Game over, import. There you 
you go. And level up. Import. And then I will read what was on the screen. All right. Um, okay, yeah, that's the, the, I'm not too worried about, I'm not worried about a, a ghost of a teeny bit of echo. All right, so let's take a look or take a listen at this version of the game. No, I will not be talking too much while the game is played. You ready? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Instructions. <laughs> now listen to this. You don't get the second boot. Right? Why do you get the second boot? Because I stopped the audio and I can fix that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> All right. So the one problem that I have is that the second boop is eliminated because I stopped all sounds. Let's go back where I did that. I did that two times. Actually, only one time that it matters. Actually, no, two times that it matters. If I click on object main, object main menu, you're going to see that I did something called stop all audio. And instead of doing stop all audio, I'm going to stop a specific audio file. Under stop, see it says stop all audio? There's something called stop audio. And I can say specifically stop the music file. So it says before you play the music file, stop the music file. So I can copy that and do it again in the other place. Remember the other place I did this was in the hero base? Hero base, create. I stopped all the audio. I just want to stop this audio. And that means that when I hit play again, those boops will be back across the board. So there should be a boop here. Good job. Yay. <sighs> All right, folks, that's it for tonight. So um, t this is it. Uh, next time we have to put in lives and score and that's it. Lives and score, right? Lives and score and waves. So I put the text on the screen, get to game over and this is over. So thank you very much for watching. Remember, if you're watching this on Twitch, subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, ring that bell, like me, follow me, all that sort of good stuff. Thanks for watching. Good night.